Okay, here we are back on the second column. Starting with the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. So, understanding the difference between the two. I have them both on here. So, <clears throat> the parasympathetic is I kind of actually switch them because um norm I mean if it, we we're talking about sequence of events because the sympathetic would actually happen first and the parasympathetic would happen after the event so the parasympathetic is what's slowing down your heart rate um, starting your body to digest again it's um, that coming down from the peak of whatever the heightened emotion was now sympathetic is what revs it up so there's some scenarios that I'll um, give you, um, like talking about where what people are doing, and maybe talking about heart pounding, uh, maybe um, your know, mouth going dry, stopping salivation, um, increased in heart rate, slowing down digestion. Those are all sympathetic nervous system activities. Parasympathetic is the opposite of that. There's also um, a, a kind of a difficult question comparing the two. Are you okay, buddy? Don't choke yourself. Um, parasympathetic and uh, sympathetic, there is a like kind of a comparative question over that. So understanding, like, I would look back at that chart in the book and also what I showed on the screen during class, which says, you know, basically uh, the child was getting ready to fall into the water this is what happened with digestion. This is what happened with the heart rate. This is what happened with salivation. This is all the things that happen compared to the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. That's probably a good, that would be a good way to study for that, I would say. <clears throat> Task performance kind of goes back to that Yerkes um, Dodson law, but basically, um, that task performance in relation to the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, you don't want to be overly revved up or it won't do well for task performance overall. We've talked about that a couple times. I would say that's probably an application. Uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline, um, they can also be an epinephrine or norinepinephrine. Um, you also should know, like, um, where does the no and epinephrine come from? What body, well, in that state of arousal, it's the adrenal glands that are releasing that into the bloodstream. <clears throat> okay, lie detection test. I kind of re-recorded a little bit there because I got it a little messed up. But um, lie detection test, um, it's, well, you need to know what they measure. Um, so looking at perspiration level. Also looking at um, heart rate level, all of that type of stuff. Okay, nonverbal cues. I think, wait a minute, there might be more than one over lie detection. Let me uh, double check that. Just know that it could be lie detection or it could be polygraph. Either one. Nonverbal cues, um, basically based on our, our uh, face. Facial muscles and the different types of um, the different types of faces that we can make is a part of nonverbal cues. That's pretty much a definition. Emotional expressiveness. So going back to what, how do we know someone is angry? How do we know someone is happy? What type of facial expressions are we talking about? And there's some application on that. So, oh, like, you know. If, if the corners of their mouth are curved up or the corners of their mouth are curved down, if they have their eyebrows together, what type of motion is going to be depicted there? Um, also, um, the relation to electronic media and also um, social media in not having the tone of voice or the nonverbal cues. Emotional expressiveness. Women are better at emotional expressiveness than men, primarily. Um, 
Also, difference between cultures. Um, some cultures tend to have more emotional expressiveness than others, and that would sometimes uh, be more important than looking at the difference between um, gender. All right, so facial feedback effect is an application question. You need to know not only how to define that, but also how to apply that. Um, I would probably say that behavior feedback phenomenon is more of a straight definition. Um, and that one's like when, like, I'm having a bad day, but I'm going to put a smile on my face, and therefore my day is going to go better overall. Um, health psychology is a basic definition as well as behavioral medicine. Those are basic definition. Um, understanding stress reactions and what a stressor is. So a stressor is anything that causes stress to an individual. It could be something as simple as a test. It also could be um, something a little bigger than that, like a robbery or something like that, but those are all considered stressors. Stress reactions. is basically what our body does to react to that. So um, um, a lot of times, like, when someone is in a stressful situation, say they're in a combat zone, they won't feel pain like they would if they were not under that certain type of stress because the sympathetic ner nervous system is working extra hard to make sure that, um, you know, there's a lot of blood sugar going through the blood that's, the large muscle groups are getting all that energy. Digestion is inhibited. The internal muscles don't need that um, in that time of stress. And that's the sympathetic nervous system. All right. Um, Canon. Um, is that the, yep. I'm on flight or flight. In epinephrine, that's pretty much the same thing. Um, that we talked about before with adrenaline and noradrenaline. Where does it come from? Why, do, why is it there? What nervous system is at working in that situation? Um, so Canon is the, the one that came up with the fight or flight, that if you put all the stressors together, it ramps your body up to either flee or to fight. There's also um, another option that might be there instead of fight or flight. It could be tend and befriend. And I think we talked about that, that sometimes in a situation where people have been through a lot of stuff, they, some people would tend to be more, they actually become friends with someone or they actually help someone because of the stressful situation like the plane crash or, you know, 9-11 are great examples of that. It doesn't always have to be fight or flight. The GAS, which is the General Adaption Syndrome, you need to know who came up with that, which was Hans um, Selyle, which is S-E-L-Y-E, -E, and basically, what's the basic definition of that? You need to know those three phases that are part of the General Adaption Syndrome, and those are alarmed reaction. Oh, there's a bear. Well, that's probably more simple. We, we looked at that happening over three months, too, but we could continue with bear. Alarmed reaction, resistance. So that's the mile and a half that you run without looking back. And then the exhaustion when you finally realize you're safe and you fall into a pile heap of stressful, mangled human being. That was supposed to be funny, but it really wasn't that funny. A psychophysiological illness is a definition. Um, psycho neural immunology is also a definition. Okay, the B and the T lymphocytes are very specific questions. There's a definition, but there's also some more application. So you need to know what each one of those do. So back to that chart that we looked at, it's also in your book. What type of infections, what type of things are each one of those treating? Or if I gave you something a little more of an application, giving you a certain type of disease, which type of lymphocytes, 
lymphocytes, sorry I'm saying that wrong, would be sent um, in an effect of like cancer, hypertension, something like that. And that would be referred to on that chart there with those. Okay, type A personality. These are the people that are more um, intense, more competitive, possibly more impatient. They do not have um, the laid back personality. Type A personality, I'll give you a scenario, and then you're going to have to pick out the different people I've described, which is type B, which is type A. I have two questions, three questions over this. Um, this is important. You're going to have to, to pay attention to that. Okay. So the FRQ. I'm not going to talk tons about the FRQ for this reason. Um, how we're going to do this is when you come into class on Tuesday, you're going to take the 65 question multiple choice test. When you come into class on Wednesday, you're going to take the one essay on that half day, 30 minutes. If you don't finish in that 30 minutes, you'll stay in my classroom until you finish it because because this is the way I've written, the way I have this FRQ written, which is more like the AP test, there's a right and wrong answer. So stopping and starting is not an option when we're doing the FRQ. So Tuesday you're doing the multiple choice, Wednesday you're doing the FRQ. Now, when we look at the FRQ, you're using parts that we've talked about before, but you're having to bring those back together because that's probably more like what you're going to have on an AP exam. The drive reduction theory, I'm hungry, I go eat a sandwich, I don't feel hungry anymore. The initiative theory, I'm motivated by something in front of me, something that I want, a cash prize. Hierarchy of needs, I'm probably going to take care of my hunger needs before I worry about my self-esteem needs or my self-transcendent needs and or my safety needs. Instinct, that goes back um, to, to more, of, more of a learning perspective. We've talked a little bit about that here. Operate conditioning, how does that apply? We've talked about operant conditioning. Remember, that's different than classical. That's think of like how you're going to train a dog. And then genetic predisposition. I'm going to give you a scenario. You're going to take every one of these concepts. You're going to apply them to the scenario and tell me whether or not that theory or that idea is a good use in that situation. Like I said, there's a right and wrong answer, but this is going to be something you're going to focus on on Wednesday. And I can also answer any questions you have on Tuesday over that. But I'm not going to tell you all the answers to that because it's an FRQ. That's kind of the purpose of it. I have at least given you this, the six things that you need to study for. I can't encourage you enough to study, especially for this multiple choice. There's a lot of points available here. It can make a big difference overall especially starting out the new semester um so hopefully you take the time to study your notes work on those things don't procrastinate till an hour before the test it doesn't work overall um hopefully you have a better idea with these two videos they're both uploaded to youtube um not only using them in class but you can also replay parts of them that you missed um to focus on the pieces that you might find that are missing have a good day. Hopefully you guys all um, recovered from the Super Bowl, no matter the outcome.